Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and we have had this uh, segment planned for a couple weeks now, but it's taken on new meaning, obviously, with DC Comics leaving Diamond after the 25-year uh, partnership. But today, I'm going to have a little bit of a Diamond Comics debate between Larry from Larry's Comics and Javain Dargan uh, from Animated Concepts. He's also had some uh, uh, work in the business as well. Larry, tell us where, where you're coming from. Well, I'm going to talk about Diamond Comic Distributors from my firsthand experience as a 30-year retailer, receiving shipments sometimes multiple days of the week, unpacking orders, visiting their warehouse, knowing personnel in the warehouse, seeing them grow from small to big. That's where I'm going to come from. All right, All right Jer Jermaine, what's your angle? And I'm coming from the um, every man's perspective on the receiving, the other receiving end of it as the customer has to come in, dealing with spine, ticks. One day, one very fine, and all the all the room in the innuendo I've heard from retailers, publisher friends, and and fellow customers. So we're gonna I'm gonna take it from that perspective. Well, awesome. All right, so Jermaine, this is essentially your challenge here, and you have three topics that you want to talk about. The first one is service. So let her rip. Okay. So um, in terms of service, um, as to uh, paraphrase uh, my good friend John James Carville, it's the packing stupid. So. Talking to a few people from my local comic shops, um, what it came down to was basically we're talking about two kinds of stores, reader stores and collector stores. Um, the reader store guys, they basically say um, they don't necessarily care about the damaged part, or in many cases say they don't get that much, that much damaged product. Um, one LCS that I talked to, what they said was that um, essentially, I asked them how often you get damaged product, they said maybe one or two books, um, every two weeks, um, depending on how it goes. Um, that shop also um, was a drop, um, did drop ship, which means from my understanding, what he explained to me, they get their truck together, drive it out to wherever the warehouse is, they pick it up and um, the dreaded UPS uh, never gets to put their hands on it. Um, I talked to another shop that was, um, uh, so they had a little bit more damage than that. Um, they got it from UPS and they claimed to have sometimes damage about five percent of the product every time they got to unpack it to get damaged. So really, what it what I found out was it depends on who you talk to, um, in terms of um, with Diamond, in terms of um, the shipping and stuff like that. Um, so that was news to me. The fact that you would have um, reader shops were having either one experience based on whether they drop shipped or not, but regardless of um, what the condition came in, if they got damaged copies, they would just put it up on the um, up on the uh, stack in the front. Let people read or flip through that, and then if people want to flip through the rest of the stack to get a nicer grade, if you will, that they can do that. Um, with the guys who were um, more anti diamond because they felt like they were in too many damaged copies, it was I get these copies, it's costing me time to get them replaced, or opportunity cost because if they don't have, if I don't have the books in the good condition my customer wants, they'll go elsewhere and get it. And um, pretty much that was it. And my and my big thing is is that now that you have Luna and UCS in um, in the mix. And it seems like, at least from initial reports, they're able to ship the books in a way where the books aren't suffering as much damage because they're usually a smaller box size or even placement within a box. I just think this is something that if Lunar's, um, Lunar and UCS are showing this much improvement in a month that we could say Diamond maybe did in the last five years. But I think they're just at this point, they're showing Diamond how to, how to, how to provide superior service. Or at the very least, Diamond should have figured out if they do have these kind of two different kinds of shops, Let's change um, the packaging we do for those shops. Charge them a premium if, if getting books in near near uh, near mint condition is that important. And then for everybody else, if you don't mind getting your books, uh, say five to ten percent of your shipment damaged, knock yourselves out. We'll send it to you. All right, Larry. I know you got opinions. Let's hear them. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Jermaine, you just outed yourself, man. Uh, books are arri books arriving in very fine condition. I mean, it, you, you, you're talking about grading. The terms of sales for diamond are saleable condition. You're talking about uh, spine ticks and very fine condition. I mean, that, that that's a perfectly saleable comic. Every single customer isn't entitled to walk up to the CG C tree and pick a 9.8 off the off the tree. I mean, that's, that's just not what it's about. I mean, that's the way that the market is going now, but that's just not the way that, the, that their business was ever set up, was to deliver you personally a 9.8. A very fine comic book with a few spine ticks is, it, 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 it's a fine comic. Maybe it's not, if you're c coming at it from a collector's standpoint, 
you could certainly go through peruse the stack and use your personalized skills to select a copy that's up to your standards. Um, yeah, but that, what is no way? That, that, that's, com- that, I, I, I think it's I, I, I'm <laughs> disgusted that Diamond gets such a bad reputation because of spine ticks in very fine condition. I, I mean, that's. What, what was what were you going to be getting back in the day of the newsstand when you were picking them off the old spinner racks? I mean, everybody's not in, every single comic is not printed in nine point eight condition. That's the the new comic book collector is demanding too much of Diamond. I think they I think they get a bad rap. You know what Steve Jeppy is? Steve Jeppy is the product of a comic book angel who had a baby with your grandpa. I mean, he's just a, just a delightful man. Okay. All so, right. Jermaine, the collector's prima donnas. No, I think, I, I think being, being way too fussy. I mean, at a 9.8 okay. is unacceptable to you. No, no, no. I mean, don't okay. buy it, but I mean that he didn't, he didn't fail. That's not a single point of failure okay. because he delivered you a piece of paper in very fine condition and 8.5 out of 10. I mean, good God, man, he shipped it across country and it didn't arrive in, you know, 9.8 condition and you, you, you're willing to go on social media and bash the man for it. I mean, I think he did his job. Okay. So first thing is I never said 9.8. I said, no, you said, you about, said you were complaining about very fine. Yeah. I complained about very, very fine in spine ticks. I mean, but that's still saleable, sir. Newsstand, in the newsstand, I don't have a choice in that. A local comic shop, I would think, would have a little bit more control over the kind of product. They, they don't. Buy. They oh. don't. You would think they do, but they don't. But they don't. They, okay. get, they get them the same as the a market, newsstand. If the market is delivered to them. Way, then doesn't Diamond have a responsibility to respond to what the market conditions are to provide well, a packing service that'll get those those books to the customers in the condition that they want? No, you can select the condition and you you can go to the shop yourself and select the condition that you want. Why do they have to deliver you a nine point eight every time? Their terms of sales are saleable. A saleable book could be a fine copy. You know, you're complaining about a spine tick. I mean, come on. Okay, so what you're saying is they don't have to respond to the to conditions of the market or the purposes of the customers in terms of the product that they receive. Every, words, if I went, if I, I'm, if I'm, I'm, I'm psyched with buying a very fine copy off of a shelf. I don't look for spine ticks. I mean, I, I think you're being hypersensitive. To honestly, no, if you're if you're hypersensitive, go. I mean, no, shop shop the stats. Not at pick all, co- pick no, out the no. copy that's best for you. Oh, you know, because first of all, you're right about that because that's a what very I fine, a very fine, a very fine comic, a beautiful comic. You're telling me the diamond. Just the, so they delivered the product. They, they delivered the product in beautiful condition, and you're complaining. Okay, so you're saying this beautiful condition. So in your mind, what's beautiful? You just said that you said very so fine. In your you mind, said, you, no, you said you said. I don't have to. I go to the shops and I see books in very fine condition with a spine tick. I mean, that's a that's a beautiful comic. A nine point eight is a rarity, sir. You, you, you're, yet, you're, you're expecting. Video, there were near mints all over the place. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's the, so you just said that diamond. Said, okay, so now with the other side of your mouth, you just said that diamond has delivered near mints all over the place. So no, no, what no, is it? Are they delivering all beat up copies said, or are no, they near mints? That's not what I said. What I said was was that some retailers reporting that they rarely get a damaged copy. Some other okay, retailers I, say that they get five to ten percent of damaged copies. If I was going to say, based on what I was hearing from people, what the difference was, was that it's either UPS is getting their hands on it, which is resulting in more damaged copies, or they're picking up the books themselves with a truck from a dropship thing, which is not resulting in UPS mishandling their books. So I'm not saying that even books are coming from the printer into Diamond in very fine and very fine Oh, they, they do? They do. If you buy a factory, if you buy them by the case, you open a case from the printer. And sometimes from the printer, they messed up from the printer i mean every every a, a 9.8 is a rare gem sir every oh, no. comic you book is a 9.8 9.8 i'll go with a 9.0 or 8.7 or 8.8 8. there's no 8.7 <laughs> and 8.8 8 <laughs> on grades I, I, I'm not going to say you said you you started, you started you started the conversation I'm not five, saying that I'm a, not that you said that a very fine is unacceptable i'm, I'm not telling you a very I, fine I, copy I is a I'm beautiful comic very you fine. just told me that you're complaining about a beautiful comic book, a very in fine copy opinion, with a spine in, tick. In your opinion, 
but you're not the one. No, no, no not, not my opinion. Oh, yeah. It's by the rules of diamond, by the terms of sale. They, they, diamond is required to deliver the product in saleable condition, not destroyed. And 8.5 is not a destroyed book. It's a beautiful comic book. All right, fellas. So I think we've, we've spent enough time on the first topic. No Jermaine, what is the second topic that you wanted to cover? Oh, well, the second topic I want to cover was just the financial condition of diamond. So I have a problem with a business that has um, had 100%. Um, yeah, go ahead. Get the hand over the face there, Larry. <laughs> Had 100% market dominance for 25 years, and the first, and admittedly, major hiccup um, basically has to pretty much shut down operations within two weeks. Basically, say they can't pay, and even when they come back, maybe do 25%. A business that's wrapping up that much of the market and basically doesn't have anywhere from a one to two to three months reserve, I've got a problem with 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 that. Okay. I went to I went to right there. I went to Dunkin' Donuts this morning and I got a delicious Dunkin' Donuts coffee and I don't give a shit about the financial condition of Dunkin' Donuts. I don't give it a thought. I just enjoy my sweet, sweet, delicious coffee. Why do you give a shit if you if, if you're getting a book that entertains you? Why do you lose a why do you expend an iota of thought or lose a ounce of sleep over the financial condition of the company that shipped you the book. Oh, he's about to open his own publishing company. He's about to be a publishing okay. company. I'll let Larry finish about his his um his beautiful donuts at Dunkin' Donuts first. Go okay. Ahead. So <laughs> so you're gonna oh okay. I did I didn't so, so you, no you, you 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 start you so started no you started no this by saying you were coming from the position of man uh, on the street. You didn't tell me that you're a publisher. I didn't understand I, that. I understand that. That, that's what you're saying, that no company, no publisher, no retailer within that chain should be concerned about the financial condition of the company, the sole company that supplies them their beautiful donuts. I didn't say that. I was... Yo, well, you were talking about pointing, donuts. I was talking can, about... Hey, hey, it's, hey, Jermaine, zip it. It's Larry time. Go ahead. I was responding to your position of being man on the street caring about the financial position. I wasn't aware that you were also a future publisher. All right. For me, for me, for me to care. For, for, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought it was, I talk, you talk. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Thank you, sir. That's very kind. Um, as, as a retailer, yes, I should probably care about their financial position. I get that point. And I get the point of you caring about their financial position as a future potential publisher. But I thought that just from a customer, who gives a I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer to both positions. So as a future publisher, yeah, I would be concerned about supplier, but also as a customer, I would be concerned as a supplier. And I'll even use the fat, the fast food, uh, the, the same thing, the fast food version. So there's a lovely McDonald's that I love, which is called on, on, Mc, on McCormick, uh, near McCormick Center. And I'm always upset when I drive in on a Monday morning, because it happens on a regular basis, when I want to go in and have my nice large glass of orange juice and they don't have it because their supplier didn't get it to them in a timely fashion for me to pick it up for the breakfast line. Yeah. yeah I said I said receiving the delicious Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I didn't say not receiving the delicious Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Oh, I'm talking about not receiving because that's what happens when your when your supplier's financial condition is so poor that they have to shut their business down for two weeks and possibly longer because they don't have the financial wherewithal to actually provide the product that a person- Well, then like from that show, standpoint, you can sleep time tight time because time. Diamond has always been, be able, been able to provide the product. So Except we haven't got to that March. point yet. Except for two weeks, at least two weeks in March, if not a month. Uh, no, that was a pandemic, sir. Well, it's happened. That was a pandemic, friend. That affected that they weren't printing them at the printer. What could they do? Not have materialized like Star Trek? Could they could they print them themselves if the printer wasn't printing? No, diamonds. Just make them materialize. Could Steve Jeppy have willed them to be? Diamonds stop payment. Diamonds stop payment. Lay people, furlough, furlough people. That does it. Now you're changing things stop. up again. You said produce the comics. You can't produce the comics if they're not printed. I said supply the comics. That's not the same thing as produce. I said well, you can't supply what's not printed. So can, you can go. supply what you have in the warehouse, though. It doesn't mean you should have. What? 
you with what the state just your, ordered the state just ordered all your employees to stay home. UPS refused to take shipments. U UPS refused to pick them up. They were non-essential businesses. How are they going to do it? Again, do you have a stock of transporter? We're going to generate the we're going to generate the we're going to use the transporter to create the comic books. And we're going to use this transporter to deliver the comic books. How how are we getting the employees there? The state shut them down. I have no problem with that, but that has nothing what, to what do you mean? with it. Okay, so, so that, okay, so you have no problem with that. Copy? So how are they going to deliver them? The, they're not printed. The printer's shut down. UPS isn't delivering, mm -hmm. and there's no employees in the warehouse. Jerome, you tell me how you're going to produce those comic books. Okay, it's, so it's your vein. Repeat those last two things again, because you said there's no employees in the warehouse, right? Yeah. As a result of the shutdown or not Diamond's financial state. Business, right? ordered okay. so the state ordered everybody for two weeks so don yes. said they weren't sure if they were going to start shipping again into july initially right because the printer shut down okay there's nothing coming in because the printer shut down okay the first day the printer's open all the books don't arrive at diamond the printing's a process yeah, i would I imagine I understand that. you've got to husk the paper and i don't mm -hmm. know Mix the inks. I don't know what it entails, but the, the, the stuff wasn't there. I understand the printer's part of the of the supply chain. So then, given giving that point for right now, so then what does that have to do with you not paying your vendors if you had a cash reserve to do so? The stores were not paying that. that it, if they have cash reserve, that's not your I'm not business. Talking about the they store, didn't have, they, I, I mean, that's they didn't, the store, the they store didn't have own, the cash reserves. The stores don't have a, don't have one hundred percent market dominance. So I'm not going to put that on retailers that don't have one hundred percent market dominance. I am going to put it on a company that does and enjoys that market dominance for, for almost two and a half decades. Mm. It's not up to me to run somebody else's business for them. Mm. Yeah, but he, I was, can't he was come. having tough times. He was shut down by a pandemic, and everybody's crying about it. Can offer if you're so them. concerned, I mean, just offer distribute them. your books. Do self distribution if you don't think. Um, if you're not going to take my, oh, my oh, word oh. that you know they've been great with me getting indie books out. In these circumstances over the past weeks, self distribution has definitely become. A oh, lot I would do it. You seem like you seem like you got that all you know under control. It has become a lot more attractive as a result of the events of the last few months. Absolutely. Yep. As much as okay. one, yeah, if I go to McDonald's to get my we're coming to McDonald's to get my large orange juice, my beautiful glass of large orange juice, and it's not there. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, it would be a problem yeah. for me. But like I told you, I went to Dunkin's and I got my delicious, I got my delicious coffee, so I didn't care because I got it. I, it was if I went there and it wasn't there, I may have a problem. But like I said, I I got my delicious coffee, so I had no problem because it was delicious and I didn't give a shit yeah, what so warehouse it came from. It though, but if you don't get oh, yeah. it, then I got a problem with the supplier, whether I'm man on the street, the retailer who can't offer my customer the product <laughs> they come to and looking for and ready to pay for, and even the vendor who's like, wait a minute, I thought I got you. There were no there were no customers in New England looking for comic books because. They were all shut. All those venues were shut down by state ordered shutdown. Like most of the country was. You just. Yeah. And then they also started offering curbside pickup almost immediately after that. Of course. I, of course we did. That's right. So of people, course we did. We had we had we had stores full. We had a store full of comic books. Yeah. We just didn't have new books. But you understand why we, we didn't have, have them books. Because yeah. I've explained it to you. And Diamond was saying. We're I've educated you that the printer was shut down. The state ordered the employees out of the business, and UPS refused to pick up packages okay. from to deliver it on essential businesses. A completely out of their control, completely out of their control supply chain collapsed. That's right, which has nothing no, to do with. Now, how, I'm, I'm, cu I'm curious. I'm curious. Go ahead. Could you educate me and Mr. Jeppy, the sweet, sweet grandpa comic angel, how you would have handled the situation, sir? I would have had a three month cash reserve so I can make sure I pay my vendors and everybody else in my in my supply chain. That doesn't that doesn't have to that so, has nothing to do with delivering exactly, books. Exactly. That has nothing to, that has nothing to do with delivering books. You just make you're just talking you're just talking smack. You're kicking a you're kicking a sweet, sweet comic angel when he's down because he was a little short on cash. How would you have delivered the books? How would you have handled it, friend? He's a, he's a nymph now. I thought he was a businessman. 
I said he's a so yeah, sweet comic angel. He's a market dominant, so the money that went along. Okay. With, that's okay. what Can I you was. tell? Are you going to tell us how you would have delivered the books? How you would have done, Mr. Oh, Jeff? I, 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 I give you, I give you not being able to deliver a product you don't have. Oh, what? Said, oh, that's what? what? I said at the beginning. What? Get you, right, so okay. what did you say? You said you'll give it. You'll ability. give it to Mr. Jeppy. Why he? You I'm what? About ability. Oh, oh, thank you so oh, much for brother. admitting that. Thank you hey, so we, much. We gotta get to the. Thank to you. The thank third. you. Thank you. We gotta you, get to you the third it. part. Of You'll the admit it. Thank All right, you, friend. Come down, Mary. We gotta get to the third part of the debate. It is okay. three thirty in the morning here, so we gotta we gotta get this going. Jermaine, what is the last point you said? Fiduciary responsibility. What was your your issues with with Diamond on that front? Oh, I'll just say this. So if Diamond is just a delivery guy, which I've heard on a number of occasions, uh, particularly when we were one of the uh, comic professionals panel, and what that what's his Larry saying? Look, all he's got to do is deliver the goods to wherever it's at, whether it's in saleable condition or wh whatever the case that is. Then he doesn't have a fiduciary responsibility to do anything because. His business. He just does his part. So I find it interesting that Mr. Jeffy then invokes, that's okay, that Mr. Jeffy then invokes when it's convenient. I have a fiduciary responsibility to keep the playing field level for all the retailers in the industry. And that's why I decided not to ship, uh, ship the books out of resume shipping at a point because some were under state orders and some weren't. So I'll start with that one right there. That wasn't um, his they decision, said, wasn't that state by state? Huh? If the state was well, open, they well, got their he orders? So he could have shipped books. I mean, he, he, as you a, said, a, the reason why okay, he, you're, you're talking, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, the reason why he wasn't able to ship books beforehand was because stores were shut down because they weren't essential, and it was all based on state orders. But as we know, the state orders across the country did not remain the same the entire time. But Mr. Jeppy decided he wasn't going to ship anyway out of fiduciary responsibility to the retailers to keep a level playing field. Well, thank you. You're wrong. Mr. Jeppy oh, decided oh, what uh, Mr. Jeppy, Mr. Jeppy, excuse me, it's my turn to speak, sir. You're talking on my time. Stop it. Go ahead. Mr. Jeppy decided to do what he did based on a retailer survey. We were all we all got a survey, and they he's it was an extensive survey. And we told our situation and we voted for what we wanted. And it, the results of the survey is what he did. Mr. Jeppy asked his customers what they wanted and he acted on what, as a group, what we voted to do. Well, That's how it came down. He didn't, he didn't just decide. I didn't cast a vote for it. Are you a retailer? Huh? When, oh, you oh, diamond, when you, oh, when you logged into your diamond, when you when you logged into your diamond account, when you logged into your diamond account, did you take the, did you the take customer. the survey, sir? I'm the customer living in the state. No, this I was not, this was family. not to do with the customers, friend. This was with your comic shop. This was the, Mr. Jeppy asked his customers, the comic shops, what we wanted to do, and based on the results of his survey, he did what we asked him to do. So does he have? And that's also, and that is also. Does he have a That, is, that is also what DC did. DC did their distribution based on the fact that we took a DC survey, and they said the results came back that retailers wanted books, so their shops wanted books. So that's why they say they broke from Diamond because they asked us via a survey, and they were doing what we asked them to do. So let me get this straight. So you told Diamond you didn't want them to ship books to you to keep the playing field level. But then when you guys talked to DC, you said you wanted the books. I just want to um, I, it, it, it was a clear, cumulative right? vote. How I, I, think, I voted how I voted was for the continuous flow of spice. Yeah. I wanted the continuous flow of product because I was out there hustling, hand delivering oh, books yeah. and doing you, curbside delivery. Got a I never wanted it to stop. Even though the whole country I always, I down always down vote for books. Yes, I vote comic. Oh, I know. And as a customer, I vote I want my comics too, especially if I'm not under the same shutdown order as somebody else. But Diamond didn't ask me that. Well, according no, to what you they said, didn't. they didn't. Before. Diamond doesn't deal with you. That's Diamond okay. is Diamond a distributor. Sure. Diamond, you know dis Diamond distributes to me and Diamond distributes to your store and it's your store's responsibility to take care of you. See, in this in this fragile economic environment of comic books, what we have to do is we all have to do our jobs. Diamond's job isn't to take care of you. It's to take care of wherever you're buying the comic book. 
The retailers are Diamond's customer. They distribute. They are just a guy who puts comics in a box and delivers them to us. They're a middleman between the publisher and a retailer, and they have nothing to do with the consumer. Okay, so to go back to your point then, since Diamond only has to deal with the publishers and the retailers, the retailers at one point when they took the retail survey said that they didn't want Diamond shipping any books to maintain a level playing field, correct? No, th no, at that point, at that point, I don't think you heard me. I don't think you heard me about the five week period when the printer transcontinental was shut no, down. No, 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 that's not, that's not the point you made. The point you made was, was that Diamond did not act out of a fiduciary responsibility to retailers out of the kindness of their heart. They did so based on a retailer survey that they sent it to all the retailers and the retailers <laughs> said they didn't want the books going out. Then you said that DC did a survey. Don't put, word, don't put guys, words in my DC. mouth. Don't you put told words DC. in my mouth, sir. You guys told DC you wanted the books. So therefore, DC broke from Diamond because Diamond was acting what you guys said. You told Diamond one thing, DC something else. So DC said, Diamond, you don't know what you're talking about because when we did our survey, this was it. And that's why we have Luna and UCS now. Because DC okay. apparently realizes, unlike Diamond, we're the customers. Okay, now now look. Larry's turn. Okay. Now wrap your head around this. We're talking about two different surveys for two different time periods. Okay. Diamond was Diamond survey was asking retailers once the state made it once the state mandated mandates lift, what would you like us to do? They weren't sending us out a survey for what do you guys want now? DC sent out a survey for what do you want now? It was two separate surveys about two completely separate situations. Do you understand that? Yeah, what I understand is you said that if the state lifts, we would rather you wait until the books go out, the book out with the state lifts. No, DC said no, we'll now, and no, you guys, we want you to wait to ship books. No, not wait, not. That's not the survey was so what do you guys now. want us to do after COVID lifts? Nobody, you, you, so you, you have to understand, to you have to understand that at the time of the survey, you didn't know if you're going to be on lockdown for a week, a month, or three months. Nobody knew at the time of the survey what was going down, but they were asking you for, are you able to receive books if your state, what is the, what is, they were asking for what the local restrictions were. They were sending out the survey for information for what we wanted once they were able to resume business according to their state audited mandates. Okay, so if the state mandate, because as it did happen, lifted in different states at different times, then you guys still were saying, no, don't send the books, right? It, no, everybody was saying different, everybody was saying different things because Diamond services a wide area. Everybody's area was different. Where I wanted books, Brian Hibbs in California did not want books. So what Diamond did was they collected the data from all their customers and they added it up and they did what the majority wanted. Oh, so there was they, a consensus. They, so there was a consensus among, or not a consensus, a majority that then became a consensus that retailers did not want. Every to go retailer out. got a vote. Everybody okay. equally so got a vote. vote. Okay. The majority vote was that when the state orders lift. We don't want the books to go out until everybody's out from under the state orders. Nope. That, that, that's not the way it was. Okay, and so as soon as Diamond was able to ship, we said we wanted books, and we got so that, that from the voting. Vote. What was Diamond's final conclusion about what they were going to do based on the vote? Because they listened to you. Yeah, all you, all you have to know, all you have to know is when did you get books in your store? That's what they did. They started shipping as soon as they could. That was the vote. People wanted books. People didn't want them to remain shut down. They wanted books as soon as possible. And you got or them as soon as Diamond was able to ship them. The Diamond survey. I'm not, because now, now I'll admit I'm confused. I heard. Well, all right. Let me, let I'll me, be honest here. <laughs> I'm confused as well. But we are up against the time. I had a great time talking with you guys. My head hurts. Comics should be a lot more fun. <laughs> Don't, just do me a favor. Tomorrow. 
or whenever you go to your comic shop, you just go there to be entertained and you buy your book out of love. Don't you worry. Don't you worry about the no, bro, judici been, judiciary been, condition of the clerk or the owner or the guy who is the janitor in the building. You just worry if you get the book in the condition you like. You just worry. Take care of you. Be good to you. And all I'll say is this, Frank. is that an industry, an industry, all of the stakeholders in the industry, from the publisher to the supplier to the retailer, should understand one thing. The customer may not always be right, but the customer is the customer. And if I want That's my orange okay. on Monday, nobody, no, nobody, said, Monday. nobody said they weren't. <laughs> all right, well, so that is going to take up the time. Let, Don't put let words in people's mouths. Are you hashtag Team Larry or hashtag Team uh, Gervain in the comment section? We are going to talk gonna about this I'm gonna on for Comments Aficionados on Saturday. We're going to see what the panel says. If we have enough good comments, we'll probably just throw them up there and talk about this again and run it back. Maybe we'll have Larry and Gervain on if they can be on the same panel again because it was a high debate. Him. I love him. I, I want to say I thank you very him. much, fellas, and I really sweet, appreciate the time. A sweet comic angel. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys, Later, <laughs> Take care, guys. I